and in this class we will study the diode behavior in the reverse bias condition that means how any diode will react whenever you will provide the reverse bias configuration that means what is the bias bias means to provide the dc voltage to any particular device to operate in my favorable situations okay that means if i want to flow the current the diode should support the flow of the current in my favorable direction and if i want to stop the current this diode should not allow any current through this from p to n because this is my favorable current all the time in my diode that means the charge carrier should flow if i am talking about the holes holes should flow from this side to this side and the electron should flow from this side to this side and only two terminals are here that means only two possibilities are here that vp should be greater than vn that means p side voltage will be higher than the n side voltage or the second one is vp will be less than vn so whenever you are doing this that means this is a forward bias situation and whenever you are doing this that means that is a reverse bias situation and this reverse will also come little bit later why the name reverse is coming and whenever the vp is equals to vn this is known as no bias condition that means you are not providing any biasing no bias condition but in this class particular we will discuss only this what will happen if you will provide this so before this we will take the equilibrium condition that means you are not providing anything here how your energy band diagram will look like of this particular pn junction at the equilibrium condition so we know that the p type is the energy band diagram of p type is this and energy band diagram of n type is this this is p type and it is n type before contacts okay and whenever you will make the contact here what will happen the electron will flow from higher energy level to lower energy level to make the energy equal and that is the equilibrium condition yes or no so as we will make the junction here this is isolated p this is iso isolated n but whenever you will make the contact between them then you will get at equilibrium you know the total current in the device will be zero at equilibrium condition that is only the meaning any charge carrier should not travel okay and when any transition will not happen whenever the energy will be constant throughout the material and what is the measure of the average energy of the particle in the material the fermi level so the fermi level will be constant throughout the device at equilibrium condition that is why i am saying all the time equilibrium so if the, the fermi level is constant of the p and n you will get to figure something like this this is the fermi level of the entire pn junction diode okay <clears throat> now if it, this is the fermi level on the p side the conduction band will be here and then you will get the efi in this region and just exact difference you will get for e c also but what you have done here you will push it down in the downward direction if you want to make this equal either you will push it up or you will push it down anything you can think so i am thinking that i am pushing it down then you will get the ec some somewhere here because the distance here is this so again we will get the efi and the exact energy you will get like this so this is ecn and it is evn it is ecp and it is ec evp that be the valence band of the p type conduction band of the p type conduction band of the n type and conduction band of this side and this is the equilibrium fermi level if there is not any change in the slope of the el 
means the Fermi level is constant. Means the average energy in throughout the material is same. And if the energy is same, you will not get any difference in the energy. So, electron cannot move. Because the movement of the electron is only possible whenever there will be energy difference inside the material. So, after getting this, I will eliminate the entire isolated P and isolated N. Because I am interested in only in the junctions. How it will react whenever you will make the junction here. Okay. This is the EFI. But we know we are making the junction. The entire change will happen only here. Okay. So we are saying that these are the neutral reasons where you will not get any effect of this particular junction formation. Now, here this much is the difference in the energies. And this one and this is this is the entire that means the EC will be continuous and the EV will be continuous because my Fermi level is constant. Okay, to make this energy sorry energy level constant, this much of decrement the energy should happen in the device. Then only you will get the Fermi level will be equal. Okay, because in this side, the electron concentration will be high. So, electron will flow from this side to this side. And whenever you are taking the electron from this side to this side, the energy level of this side will keep on decreasing. Now, this is the condition of the equilibrium. That means no motion or the charge carrier will take place after this position. Okay. And here you are getting energy difference. And we know the energy. Sorry. And we know the energy is given by minus Q into V. Energy difference you are able to see. That means the sum voltage will be also developed across this particular junction. So we are saying that E into V naught. Because the voltage developed between the junction is V naught. Which is also known as the VBI. And VBI is nothing just the built-in potential of this particular diode. Okay. Or in other words, we can say, if any electron to move from this side to this side, it has to cross this particular barrier. Or if any hole want to move from this side to this side, it has to cross the barrier of the V0. That is why it is known as the barrier potential or built-in potential. Why built-in? Because this voltage you haven't applied from the outside of the diode. This is forming just because of the material property of this particular junction built in already it will be developed with irrespective of your desire it will develop there and you cannot control after fabricating the device okay and i'm not going in the detail of this v naught we are just taking this the v naught is equals to v t ln n a n d upon n i square okay and what is this any ND upon an I square. That means as you will increase the doping of the P side and N side, V naught, the built in potential will keep on increasing. That means this barrier will keep on increasing. And we have seen one more thing W is equals to 2 epsilon by Q V naught 1 upon NA plus 1 upon ND. This is under equilibrium cases, I am discussing. These voltages, you have seen only under equilibrium condition. Or in other words, we not, we can say, the voltage required to maintain the equilibrium in this particular junction diode. Okay. The V0 is required voltage to develop the equilibrium inside the, this particular junction. Now, we are discussing only the condition where the VP will be less than the VN. Here I am only discussing about the magnitudes. So, or in other words, VPN will be less than 0. Then only if this will be there, then VP minus VN should be less than 0. Then only this case is valid. So, now, if you will increase the doping, the depletion width, this W, will keep on reducing. Okay. And these things already you have 
discussed in the diode in equilibrium position. Here I am discussing only this particular portion. What will happen and what will be the effect of this? Now, if you will increase this, if I am taking this, so for the reference you have to take any one point as a ground, either n type or p type. If this will be, that means if you have any diode, p and n, and you are claiming that the n side potential is higher than the p side, if you are taking this, then you will provide the negative values is here. Or if you will take this as a ground, then you will provide the positive values here. Either take the outermost or, or take inner one. Then only you can see the significant change in the Fermi levels either in P side or N side. Because if you will change both the sides together, then the visualization of the bending of the energy band diagram will become crucial. So I am taking this case where the P side will be grounded and N side will be positive. I will provide this particular situation because I know the VP is less than VN. If this value is positive, then definitely this value will be greater than this. Okay. Now, so I will provide the ground here and I will keep on increasing the voltage of this side. And we know one thing, E is equals to minus Q into V. If you are increasing the voltage, definitely the energy will keep on decreasing. Okay. So, if you will do this, what will happen? This is at a steady position and you are pushing it down. Because you know, whenever you will increase the voltage, the energy will keep on decreasing. Okay. So, instead of this diagram, you will get something like that. This barrier will keep on increasing because the external voltage will appear only across this because we have assumed one thing that this side that means outside of this and outside of this is a neutral region. Any voltage drop will not occur in this region as well as in this region because we have already discussed in the network analysis. I hope all of you have studied that that if any resistance is of 1 ohm and here you have 1 mega and here you have 1 ohm and some voltage you have across this then where you will get the maximum amount of voltage across the maximum value of the resistance and here any mobile charge carriage is not there that is why it is known as immobile charge carriage that means this layer will act as an insulator so you know the entire voltage will be across this only okay so I am not going in detail of that so this bending will increase as well as the width will also keep on increasing. So, after doing that, the bending will be something like this. And you have pushed it down, then you will get two Fermi levels. Previously, this bend was only V0. At this time, now, the direction of the V0 will be this. And whatever the potential you are providing from here, that is also in this direction. Because this side is at higher potential than this. That means the total polarity will be this. So, here the total bending will be E into V0 plus Vr. And this externally applied voltage I am saying Vr. The reverse bias voltage, whatever you will provide across this particular junction diode. So, the junction width will increase as well as this voltage drop across the depletion region will increase. And again, we have assumed this. The entire reverse bias voltage, whatever you are applying, that will exist across the depletion region only. Then only you can claim this. Okay. Otherwise, you will get the slant here also. That means we are assuming that the voltage is changing here. Okay. And we have assumed that in the neutral regions, in the deep P side and deep N side, there will not be any drop. So, whatever the drop you are getting just because of this depletion tree. Okay. Now, you will see the two type of things are here. First one, this will keep on increasing the width. The sex, second one is, you have increased this particular height across the junction. That means now, electron if I want, electron want to travel from here to here, it will see more barrier. And if 
a whole world to transfer from here to here, it will also see the more barrier. So, you are creating the disturbances. That means you are increasing the barrier. That means you are not allowing the charge carriers to transfer from this side to this side or from this side to this side. Okay. And the inbuilt electric field will be in the direction of this. The inbuilt electric field will be in this particular direction. Okay. So, the total electric field will be in this direction. So, E0 plus ER. The electric field responsible because of the reverse bias voltage. And E0 is electric field because of this built-in potential. So, the total electric field will be in this direction from N to P. Okay. Any problem in this? If you have, then you can think it again. But after this, what will happen? Come to this side. That means that if the electric field direction is this, no hole can move from this side to this side and no electron can move from this side to this side. Because the electric field direction is this, which will oppose the charge carrier transfer of the majorities. Because here the majorities are whole and electric field direction is this. So a hole cannot move in this side. Okay. Similarly, if the electric field direction is this, electron cannot move in this side. Okay. Because the F is equals to Q into E, where E is an electric field. I am talking about in this region only because where you are getting the non-zero electric field, only in the depletion region. The force direction is this, in this direction, in the direction of the electric field for holes. So, electric field direction is this, so hole will move in this direction, which is, it is not supporting because the hole want to flow from this side to this side. But the electric field direction is this, so electron, sorry, hole cannot move from this side to this side. And similarly, F is equals to minus Q into E. And if the electric field direction is this, electron cannot move in this direction. Electron have to move in this direction. So, this particular electric field will not allow the majority charge carrier flow from P to N or N to P. Okay. So, in this particular case, but one C, one difference is there. Now, this equilibrium EF will convert it into two parts. This will become EFP. And this will become EFN, which is known as the quasi Fermi level. Little bit deviation from the equilibrium condition. Okay, quasi means little bit devi deviation, which will not exist in the equilibrium condition. Okay, so here see this much energy difference you will get. And if the energy difference is there, definitely the charged particle will flow from here. Okay. Now where the charged particles are high in this side. Sorry, energy level. Energy level is high here. So electron will move now from this side to this side. And the hole will move from this side to this side. Okay. But see the electric field direction. If the electric field is direction is this, definitely the force offered on the electron will be in this direction. So the electron is moving in this direction. This is the electron which will move in this direction. And if the electron is moving in this direction, definitely the current will be in this direction. So I am saying this is I m. And if the hole is moving in this direction, in the direction of the electric field, then the current will be in this direction, which is IP. So the total current IN plus IP in the direction of the electric field is I0 is equals to IN plus IP. But see the beauty. What is your favorable direction of the current? Always you want the current from P to N. So this current I0 will be I D. Diode current will be minus I0. Opposite to this. Okay. And if the electron is moving from here to here, means in the P side, the electrons are minorities. Similarly, if the hole is moving from N side to P side, this is also minorities. So in the reverse bias condition, this electric field will allow only the minority charge carriers to flow. That means in the reverse bias case, 
always you will get the current because of the minorities. And you know, if you have increased the doping, the minority carry concentration will be more less. That is very less amount of the minority charge carriers you will get for highly doped semiconductor. If the semiconductor is not highly doped, you will get the larger number of the minority charge carriers. But if you want to make efficient diode, which will not conduct in the reverse bias condition. So you want this current should be zero. Yes or no? That is why this is also known as the leakage current. Because you are in providing the more barrier. Providing the more barrier means you don't want any conduction because of this. But still you are getting this much amount of current. Because of the minorities. What is the one thing which you can do to reduce the minorities? Increase the doping of the diode. If you increase the doping, automatically the minority will keep on decreasing. Okay, so you can say this I0 is inversely proportional to minorities. Okay, if you will increase the minorities, this will reduce. If you will reduce this, this will increase. We have seen that the I0 is inversely proportional to minority carriers. And the minorities numbers are less within the depletion region. So this magnitude of the I0 will be very less. It is flowing in this particular direction. And if the minority numbers are fixed at any particular temperature, that means this will be also constant. Because if you are not increasing the number of charge carriers, then who will provide the more current? Okay, that is why this will become the constant value of the current. And it is also known as the reverse saturation current. This is the reverse saturation current which is inversely proportional to the minority carrier concentration. But what will happen if you will keep on increasing this reverse bias voltage across the diode? That means you are increasing the voltage at this side Vn than this side Vp. That means for higher value of Vpm in the reverse bias case. So we are taking two things together. First, we are taking that the doping is very low. The first one is low doped diode. If the diode is low doped, then what will happen across this? So I am only discussing this reverse bias region. Because I am not interested in the neutral regions. So I am taking only depletion region. What, because of whatever the change you are providing from outside of this, that will accumulate here only. That means the total effect of the reverse bias or forward bias voltage, you will see across this junction only. So I am interested only in the depletion region part. What will happen to this particular region? So... This is the region. Okay. And the electric field direction is this. And this electric field direction is E0 plus ER. That means the electric field because of the reverse bias voltage. And E0 is the electric field because of this particular built in potential. Up to here we have discussed. Now what will happen if we will keep on increasing the electric field here? Basically here, the minority charge carriers will present. Yes or no? And if the minority charge carriers are here and you are increasing the electric field, definitely the energy of the particle will keep on increasing within this region. Okay? And if the energy by which the electron is flowing, that means the kinetic energy which that particular electron or hole will gain from the applied electric field. If the energy of that particle is sufficient enough that will rupture the bond of any particular atom. That means if you have any particular atom which, which is having a lot number of electrons. Okay. So if you have any electron which will have enough energy to detach any electron from this, then what will happen? This electron will be generated by providing the hole here. Yes or no? 
That means each and every collision will provide the electron and hole pair. And they will again will flow in the direction of the electric field. That means electron will flow in this direction and the hole will move in this direction. Because the hole is moving towards the electric field direction and electron will move opposite to the field of direction of the field. So, again those newly generated electron and hole pair will collide with any other atom. Then again they will generate the EH pair. Then again those newly generated EH pair will collide with any other atom. And this process will keep on increasing. And this process will keep on increasing in the multiplication fashion. And that particular phenomena is known as the avalanche multiplication. Okay? And if this multiplication process keep on increasing, then what will happen? A huge number of charge carriers you will get here. Why the reverse transition current was fixed? Because no number of minority charge carriers will present in inside the depletion region. But if this process will keep on increasing, then what will happen? A huge number of electron hole pair generation you will get within this region. And if the electron and hole pair are very in huge amount and electric field direction is this, then hole will move in this direction and the electron will move in this direction. Because already I have provided an electric field. Only the absence of the minority was restricting the I0. But this particular process will provide a lot of charge carriers within this region. Because of this, huge amount of current will flow through your, the device in this particular direction. And that is a case of the breakdown. So, this is the one situation, but in which low dope diode. Why the low dope? I will come to this little bit later. But whenever the breakdown is occurring because of this avalanche multiplication, that is known as the avalanche breakdown. And the normal diodes are low dope diodes. So in the normal diode, always you will see such type of behavior. Okay? The chain reaction avalanche multiplication will keep on increasing in this depletion region due to which the major, sorry, minority carrier will keep on increasing in the multiplication fashion. And you have already provided the electric field. So huge amount of current you will get for higher value of voltage. That is known as the breakdown voltage. V, B, R. Okay. <clears throat> this is, this will happen only in the low dope diodes. But what will happen and why it is possible to, to gain the elect energy of any particular electron to detach the atom, sorry, detach the electron from the atom. Because the doping is less means in this particular amount of area. If the area is this, and doping is less means the charge particle or the atom density, whatever the doped semiconductor you have provided, that will lie very far away from each other. That means enough space for the electron to achieve the energy. Because you know the kinetic energy is 1 upon 2 mv square. And this energy will be decided by the velocity. That means if any electron want to raise the energy, it has to travel some distance. Then only you can increase the velocity of that particular charge carrier. And when it is possible, then whenever they will get the enough space in between. Yes or no? Space means less number of charge carriers should be there. That is the reason why this principle will only occur in the low dope diode. This will never happen in the highly doped diodes. Okay? So... The breakdown, avalanche multiplication always will happen in the general diodes. Case, whenever the diode will be highly, the second type of diodes are high dope diode. If the diode are highly doped, then highly doped diode means if you are increasing the doping then what will happen this value will keep on decreasing this width so your the width will be very narrow in several micrometers okay and this is the total width of the depletion region 
and if you are increasing the doping means this V naught value will also keep on increasing because what is the V naught? V naught is V T L N N A N D upon N I square. If you will keep on increasing the doping of the P side and N side, this V naught will keep on increasing. So what will happen here? The V naught is increasing, W is decreasing means the electric field. will keep on increasing because you are increasing this voltage and you are reducing this. So overall value will be keep on increasing. So what are the basic things which will happen in this particular type of thing? The first one is Na increase or Nd increase. The second one is W dap will decrease. The third one V naught will increase. Due to which E naught will increase. This is the prime factor. The electric field across the depletion region should be very high. And when it is possible, the V naught will increase and the DAP will increase. That is the reason you have to do this. Now, if the electric field near this junction is very high, okay, and this width of this is very narrow, then there is a possibility that these electrons from this side will penetrate this and the whole will be of this side will penetrate this and this is known as the tunneling of the charge carriers okay and to do this very less voltage required to get this particular current in this particular direction than the avalanche multiplication process because there you are providing the kinetic energy of the charge carrier by external voltage. That type of things are not required here. The thing is same like this. Basically, if you have one hill like this, what is your general tendency? If you want to cross this hill, you will start traveling from here. Yes or no? And this much energy is required. This much height you have to go through. Then all you can cross this particular height. Which is known as the built-in potential. If you want any charge transfer from one side to another side, this much hill you have to cover. But what will happen this side? You will make the tunnel throughout the device. Okay? And the electron will move from this. And, advanced, and this process is known as the tunneling. Tunneling of the charge carrier from P side to N side. And which type of charge carriers? Minorities. Because the electric field direction is this. Which will only support the minority carrier concentrations. Okay. And I am not going that detailed discussion of this particular thing. Because detailed discussion of this, we will discuss in the tunnel diode. How this will happen. Okay. But what is the basic requirement for this? Electric field should be very high as well as this width of this depletion region should be very narrow. Then only this can happen. And to achieve this, this much energy is not required. Within the small energy you can do this. Okay. So, and this phenomena is known as the Zener breakdown. Whenever the electron can penetrate the depletion region from this side to this side and hole can penetrate the depletion region from this side to this side. And this can happen at lower voltages also. And whenever this flow or charge carrier from this side to this side and this side to this side is enough to provide the huge amount of current. That is known as the Zener breakdown in the reverse bias. But this can happen at lower voltages also. But to achieve the avalanche, you have to increase the voltage in the reverse bar direction by huge amount. These are the two possible situations. Now you can ask, why that phenomenon of the avalanche is not occurring here? Because here the crowd, the first requirement is the doping should be very high. That means now you have in the avalanche, if assume that if this D distance is required to achieve the energy to detach the at 
electron from any particular atom. Now you have increased the doping. So the atom will exist like this. So at any particular amount of time, this particular electron cannot travel this particular distance. Because this will collide before achieving that particular energy. So any particular amount of time, that electron will never achieve that kinetic energy by which it can detach the electron. That is why that avalanche will never occur in the highly doped diodes. That will occur only at low doped diode. And this principle will only occur in highly doped diodes. So basically, most of the time, whenever you will see the avalanche that is happening at very high voltages. And with that effect, definitely the diode will burn out because that is happening at very high voltage. And this is the controlled breakdown. So whenever we are using the breakdown as a properties, always we will use this. And this is one of the special purpose diode, which we will discuss in detail in the further classes. This is the main special purpose diode to regulate the voltage. Okay, now we are discussing only the VI characteristic of avalanche and the Zener breakdowns. We are discussing only in the reverse bias. So this will be the I and this will be by V. And if I am discussing the reverse bias, definitely that in will be, that will be in the negative real axis. What we are assuming in the avalanche? The current will be constant up to the reverse bias breakdown voltage. After breakdown, what will happen? The breakdown will occur. And this is known as, this is Vn, sorry, not Vn, this is known as Vk, knee voltage. Okay, and this will happen at very high voltage. And this is known as the avalanche multiplication, Z, breakdown. But in the Zener, what will happen? Zener will be very less. The same type of curve you will get, but from where you can rectify whether that is Zener or whether that is a avalanche. Avalanche always will occur at higher voltages and the Zener will always occur at lower voltages. And whatever the breakdown you can control, that is your favorable type of breakdown and that is a Zener. So this voltage is known as the VZ. Okay. So whenever the breakdown voltage is about to 6 or less than 6. That means whenever the VBR is about to 6 or less than 6, that breakdown will be VZ. The Zener breakdown. If the voltage breakdown, whatever you are getting, below 6 volt or below 9 volts, that will be the Zener breakdown. But whenever the breakdown is greater than 9 volts, that will be the avalanche. And whenever this will happen, that is a case of Zener breakdown. These are only the differences. And whenever you are taking this, that will become the special purpose diode, which is known as the Zener. This is a Zener diode. And the avalanche will occur only in the general diodes. And it's all about the diode in the reverse bias as well as the breakdown in particular diodes.